Hi everyone, Mark Gamble here. I'm the Director of Product and Solutions Marketing at Couchbase, and I'm stoked that you've joined me. My mission in this session is to show you how you can be a DBAS badass with Couchbase Cloud. I'm gonna take you through the steps to get a sample application up and running on your Couchbase Cloud account, and show you how to connect to your data for analysis using popular BI tools. You'll leave armed with enough information to recreate my Couchbase Cloud keynote demonstration in just a few simple steps. So let's dive into the presentation. For those that didn't catch the keynote presentation with Scott Anderson, I'll start with a little background on Couchbase Cloud, then move into the meat and potatoes, the sample apps demonstrations. This won't be a deep technical dive, consider it as more of a behind the scenes of the Couchbase Cloud keynote demo from Scott's presentation. And I'll show you how you can set up the exact same samples in less than an afternoon. It'll help give you a sense for the ease and speed with which you can get up and running on Couchbase Cloud with your own applications, as well as point you to resources to jumpstart your efforts. So we have a lot to cover and just a little time to cover it, so let's get cooking. To start, what is Couchbase? Well, Couchbase is only the world's best distributed NoSQL database. It delivers unmatched versatility, performance, scalability, and value across cloud, on-premises, edge, and hybrid deployments. When we consider how Couchbase is different from other modern databases, there are really three key areas where we win with our customers. First, in agility and flexibility for developers. Couchbase accelerates application development by capitalizing on a ubiquitous query language, SQL. It offers full text search and adaptive indexing, along with seamless data synchronization, all as core features of the software. Customer studies show that these tenants enable a 20% faster development lifecycle for applications. Next, Couchbase offers predictable performance at scale. The server can handle any volume, volatility, or speed of data, any number of sources, and any number of end users with an end memory data set process smart optimization, and highly performant indexing. Customers report that their applications show 10 to 20x better performance on Couchbase. And it's the easiest platform to manage for DevOps. Couchbase helps you streamline in the things like setup and configuration, or take advantage of multi-cloud agility. And it helps ensure availability with the five nines, 99.999% reliability. Customers report 37% more efficient database management and 14% lower database licensing costs, leveraging Couchbase. Couchbase server is really the basis of our value, but you know, don't just take our word for it. The readers of database trends and applications voted Couchbase the best database overall in this year's DBTA Reader's Choice Awards. Couchbase also won the best in-memory database category for the third consecutive year. We also received finalist distinction in the categories of best NoSQL database, best IoT solution, and Couchbase Cloud makes its debut on the annual Reader's Choice list as a finalist for best cloud database. We're honored to have received this recognition and it really speaks to the value that customers get from the technology. Couchbase Cloud is our fully managed database as a server for Couchbase server. It offers automated deployment, scaling, failure recovery, upgrades and backup as part of the service. It gives you unified monitoring and alerting of all Couchbase clusters under management through a single pane of glass, inclusive of the underlying cloud infrastructure where Couchbase is deployed. We support hybrid cloud deployments from the standpoint of replication. This is the ability to replicate data from self-managed Couchbase clusters into Couchbase Cloud. We also offer, and this is important, in VPC deployment. Your data is in your virtual private cloud managed by you and encrypted and secured end to end. A little about the offering. Um, there's a free trial to allow you to evaluate the service and uh, we also have two paid offerings, a developer pro and enterprise, which are differentiated by price and support SLAs. With these offerings, you can get a Couchbase server and management leveraging your cloud service provider, enabling you to optimize your infrastructure costs based on your needs. And the use cases supported on the service are all the same use cases supported by Couchbase at large, the ones our customers deploy most often, such as catalog and inventory management, profile and session management, customer 360, 
digital transformation, and of course, caching use cases, a very common customer use case using Couchbase as a persistent cache. Couchbase Cloud's differentiators break down into uh, these key points. Number one, it's really about the inheritance of all the capabilities of Couchbase Server, the most powerful and versatile NoSQL database on the planet. All the reasons that customers rely on Couchbase Server for their applications every day come part and parcel with Couchbase Cloud. Number two is about control and data security through NVPC deployment. This is an emerging best practice, not found in competitive DBAS offerings, but is the primary deployment option for Couchbase Cloud. Without NVPC deployment, you, the customer, lose control of data security and sovereignty by not being in command of the environment where the software resides. And this can throw you out of compliance with data residency and ownership regulations like GDPR, CCPA, and others. So with NVPC deployment, you stay in complete control of the data. Number three is the ability to control multiple database clusters from a single console instead of managing them as individual entities. Number four is the ability to control replication and cloud migrations by taking advantage of Couchbase's hybrid cloud replication capabilities in our cross-region XDCR, data center replication, uh, to support high availability and disaster recovery. And number five is really about controlling costs. Um, Couchbase offers the best price performance and the lowest TCO of any NoSQL vendor for their workloads. In fact, our customer, Facet Digital, told us that they reduced costs by 50% and increased application performance by 100% switching to Couchbase Cloud. So this diagram is uh, far too detailed to go through in a short time, but I wanted to show it to you to give you a sense of the depth of capability and the thoroughness of features in the Couchbase Cloud architecture. It is architected from the ground up to support enterprise class applications. The data plane on the bottom represents the Couchbase nodes across availability zones. When you create a new cluster, we deploy a Kubernetes cluster within your VPC along with Couchbase Autonomous Operator to provide management capabilities and a monitoring plane leveraging Prometheus. That cluster is then automatically deployed across multiple availability zones within the region. The entire ecosystem is accessed and monitored through a single pane of management. Here we see on the top, the cloud control plane. This is the place where you log in to work with Couchbase Cloud. It's a console that allows you to control everything in your account instance from user and group management, access permissions, cluster management, monitoring and metering, to event management, and much, much more. We'll take a look at that uh, in just a bit. One of the unique aspects of the Couchbase control plane is this concept of seeing everything um, that you need to do with your account in one place. Unlike some other DBAS solutions that make you use separate tools or UIs for administration, querying and optimizing and the like. For developers, it's really great because you can use this UI to create development projects, spin up data sandboxes, assign teams of collaborators with specific privileges, and work directly with the data using ut utilities built right into the console. So again, I'll be showing you some of those in the demonstration. Getting started with Couchbase Cloud is really just as easy as one, two, three. Go to uh, cloud.couchbase.com, that's cloud.couchbase.com, to request your free trial. That's where you create your account and you can sign up. Um, next, you create your Couchbase Cloud environment. AWS is currently supported, Azure coming by end of year, and Google Cloud in 2021. Once your account is set up, you spin up your cluster with just a few mouse clicks and start developing. It really is just as easy as that. So now let's, let's take a look at Couchbase Cloud in action. I'll walk through some basic scenarios and show you how to set them up and give you a sense of the ease and power of the technology. First, we'll take a look at the cloud control plane, the Couchbase Cloud console that gives you access to user management, monitoring, and data tools. I'll show you what you need to do to load sample data, how you query it, and how to set up a full text search index. 
Then I'll walk you through how to enable programmatic access to the data for your applications. Next, we'll take a look at how to get the uh, Couchbase SDKs going. In my case, I'll use uh, the Node.js SDK. And we'll look at how to set up the sample applications and how to wire them up to your Couchbase Cloud account. And lastly, we'll look at leveraging Couchbase Cloud for business intelligence and analytics, where I'll show you how to access data and create a dashboard. So first, we'll go through uh, some of these steps by taking a look at the management console. Um, we'll have a bit of a showcase there, but also go through what you need to do to prepare the environment for your sample data and ultimately connection uh, from your applications and from your BI tools. So we'll go through how you import sample databases to your cluster, um, how you create a unique type of user account called a database user to enable that querying of the data, uh, how you add IP addresses to the trusted list to allow connection from your local system for your tools, and uh, where to download the security certificate for secure connection. So let's pop over into Couchbase Cloud. All right. So this is the Couchbase Cloud console. It's that, again, single plane of glass for all your Couchbase clusters. This is where you control all aspects of your Couchbase Cloud account and clusters, users, projects, activity, and billing. As I mentioned before, this is where you developers can actually create sandboxes for development projects and create teams with specific access levels to the data, as well as import and work with the data. So let's start by going to clouds where you're going to actually start. So when you get your account established, you're gonna connect it to your own AWS account. So a, cl a cloud in Couchbase Cloud is a virtual private cloud environment without, within your own cloud account. So it's equivalent to a VPC or VNet within a CSP. So I already have one set up, it was quite easy. I just simply went in, was able to give it an arbitrary name, uh, select my regions and put in the uh, I've just accepted the default CIDR block and then uh, hit connect cloud. It took a bit of uh, just a little bit of time and was able then to spin up my couch spring uh, cloud here running on uh, AWS in the US West region. So that was step one, very, very easy to do. So once you've got that, then you have your, your back end, your infrastructure is now ready to, to start running. So next, what you wanna do is uh, set up a project. So a project is a way to sort of collect your uh, clusters and different resources together into uh, sort of topic or subject area specific um, kind of efforts. So here we're looking at my current project, uh, CBPMK, it's Couchbase Product Marketing. Uh, very easy to set up, all you do is just determine what the name is and if you like, you can optionally even add users at this point. When we take a look at mine, I actually have this one project with two clusters running in it. So now you're ready to create your cluster. So you saw that my project already has clusters in it. What did I do? I uh, was able to go in and create uh, setting up a brand new cluster. So you can see I already have two in here, Cloud Demo and Couch Surfin. But um, I'll walk through the settings panel without creating a brand new cluster, just to show you how easy it is. So we'll create a little test cluster. So it's very straightforward. You give it an arbitrary name, then you select whatever cloud that you actually have established. Uh, and then you wanna associate it with a project if you have one, or you can even create new ones during this setup uh, process. So next we hit create cluster. And this is now where you have access to actually uh, choose your cluster sizing from a set of templates. So the free trial, 30 day free trial is what I'm running. Uh, highly recommend everybody start with that and go with the three node. But of course, once you start getting into development and ultimately to production, you have other templates that are optimized for things like key values, queries, and full text search. So in this particular case, I've got a deployment. Uh, my own um, uh, environment here is uh, set up with the small deployment configuration and all of the services. So in this case, um, rather than actually uh, uh, connect it up, um, we'll go ahead and, and actually not create that one. Just wanted to show you how easy it is to set up. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that one that's still there. And we're gonna actually work with the other ones that are already created. 
So now I'll go into um, users. We want to talk a little bit about users because before you can start querying things and, and whatnot, you want to make sure that you actually create a database user. So a database user is a special type of user account required uh, to query data. In order to run queries within your own administrator account, you can create a database user associated with your username. You can either add a unique database user uh, or a cloud user. And in this case, um, I've already added two database users um, to my own cluster. In this particular case, I've granted them access to the cloud demo cluster. So I have my cloud DB user that has access to that, all buckets. And then I also have a database user called test DB with access to my couch surfing uh, cluster and all buckets within. So do that before you actually start uh, uh, going through the rest of the steps and querying the data. Uh, it's even required for an administrator account. And again, it's just an additional measure of security. So in this case, now let's go over to our clusters and we'll go into couch surfing. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about connections. So here we are in my, um, my couch and cluster and I have three nodes and three buckets of data. So when I created the brand new cluster, one of the things I did was add my three sample buckets. So we highly recommend that, that you do the same thing. But let's go ahead and take a look first at connections because you wanna be able to allow and enable access to the data from your local machine. So here is where you actually uh, grab that public external endpoint for being able to connect from your external tools. Uh, and then you also have a private one if you're uh, using uh, NVPC peering. So I'm, I'm actually using the public to connect in all of my examples. The other thing that you need to make sure you do is um, find out your IP address. You can use whatismyip.com and then add that as an allowed IP address. And don't save it as temporary, uncheck that and make it a permanent address. That way you'll be able to connect without problem. Uh, also, we want to point out that in order to connect for business intelligence, you want to make sure you get your security certificate downloaded. So this root certificate will allow you to um, input the certificate into your uh, settings for connection again through the uh, drivers that will allow your uh, BI tools to connect to your Couchbase Cloud instance. So download that, store it in a safe place locally, and we'll kind of get to that uh, a little bit later. So again, in my uh, couch and cluster uh, or couch surfing cluster here, we have three nodes and three buckets of data. And you can create a, a brand new cluster and then import your data into buckets very easily. So uh, buckets and couch base are really analogous to database instances in the relational world. So make sure to install the sample data buckets, which is what I have here. They give you a great basis to learn how couch base works and they underpin most of the available SDK samples. So in fact, how do you get data into your Couchbase Cloud account? Very simple. There's a utility built in for importing. So here's where you can import your own data, both JSON and CSV, as well as you, this is where you go to load your sample databases. So all you have to do is just simply click import and they are automatically loaded and indexed into your account. So let's, uh, let's take a look at querying the sample um, beer sample database bucket. I'm going to go into the query workbench. So this is a really powerful tool, again, built directly into the UI. And it, it really makes it easy for us. We don't have to plug in some other tool or go to some separate uh, third-party query utility. It's all built right here into the console. So in this case, we'll look at the beer, uh, sample beer bucket, um, and it contains data on breweries across the globe, as well as on craft beers that each brewery serves. So one of the main reasons that Couchbase is such a boon to productivity is that developers can use plain garden variety SQL to query the data, even though the data is JSON. So our query language is called N1QL, or you'll hear us call it Nickel. This is one of the most powerful features in all of Couchbase. So it, I'll use one of the uh, best tools, again, built into Couchbase Cloud Console, this query editor. Unlike other DBAS providers who make you use different tools and UIs to work with your data, it's built right in here. So here we have a, a simple select statement to bring back all breweries from our beer sample database. 
select star from beer sample, where type equals brewery, that's document type of brewery. And again, that uh, a document type is a, a analogous to a table. And here we're setting the condition where the state is California. We'll just bring back 10 values. So very straightforward and super easy, right? It's just SQL. Every, everybody knows that. It's a ubiquitous query language and a ubiquitous developer skill. So another unique with Couchbase Nickel is the ability to join across document types. So here's another um, query that we'll go into. In the beer sample bucket here, I'm gonna use an ANSI join to list the beer names, which is in one document type, and their associated breweries, another document type, in this case, very specific, that are in a given state. So we can go ahead and execute that. And while it's executing, the like to mention that, you know, of course, the ability to join in nickel statements allows you to create an input object by combining two or more source objects. And joins are typically difficult with JSON, if, if able at all in other vendors, but not when you use nickel. Joins are a, a regular and common construct in nickel queries. So here we are seeing the, uh, the one brewery and beer that matched our criteria and we were able to join across documents to bring this back. So a couple of examples of nickel, it's just plain SQL. And this is the number one reason that customers choose Couchbase over the competition, because they can leverage their existing expertise to work with the data. And that's right, even your existing code against relational sources, once you import data into Couchbase, um, you'll be able to reuse those existing SQL statements with a minimum of modification, if any. So now let's move over to my other cluster. We're gonna get a little more uh, advanced. I'll go into my cloud demo cluster. And uh, this is where I have nodes with um, full text search service set up on it. So when we see these are my nodes and I've set them up with all of the services across them. So while we're on this screen, this also makes it clear that um, another great thing about Couchbase is that if you choose a custom configuration, if you decide to leverage a little more advanced skills, you can create nodes and balance the services across them relative to the workloads that you expect in your application. You might have one node dedicated to querying. You might have another dedicated to search. And you're able to balance this for optimal performance for your applications. So in this case, um, I have full text search service on this particular uh, set of nodes and in, in this cluster. And that means that I can use FTS or full text search against my buckets to enable search in my applications. So there's no need to bolt on search technology like Solar or Elasticsearch. Full text search is built right in to Couchbase. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I have an existing full text index on my travel sample for hotels. I'll show you how that works leveraging an application in just a moment. Um, but uh, in this case, let me set up a little use case. Suppose I'm using the beer sample bucket as a back end for an application, and I want to enable search on beer characteristics. So people searching for things like malt or hoppy, you know, flavors or other characteristics um, can enter those terms and find just the right beer for their tastes. So adding a search index is really super easy. Let's go ahead and add one now. I'm going to add a brand new one and call it beers. And we'll pull that, of course, out of the beer sample bucket. Now we continue to configure. What we want to do now is map that to a document type. And I'm going to map that to the beer document type. Simple enough. And we're going to stop there. We're going to go ahead and say, let's index the, the whole kit and caboodle of beer document types. So if anybody types something in, what the search will do is scour through the entire record looking for any matches. So we'll create that mapping. If we wish to be more, even more specific, we can create uh, child mappings so that we can actually map to an individual and very specific field to search through. Uh, but let's just keep things simple and I'll work with this uh, beer mapping now. So we'll create that index. So lickety split, it was super easy and super quick now to enable that. So now let's go ahead and take a look at it. So another nice thing is that once you have a, a, an FTS index set up, you're very easily able to test it. So here, let's look for uh, beers that match uh, malty flavors. So here, here are all those. 
How about ones that are, uh, have something of a hoppy nature? So we can enter that and bring back, these are all of the, the documents that match that particular criteria. So um, powerful functionality. We don't have to bother with things like um, conditional operators in our query to try and think of every permutation of a given search term. Let full text search do the work for you. And thankfully it's built completely into Couchbase and makes it super easy uh, for us to uh, wire up text uh, full text search into our own applications. So I also have my hotels full text search here and I was able to quickly index my hotel type documents to enable FTS. So this means that anyone using my application, uh, the sample app that will show you CB travel, they'll be able to search for things like bed and breakfast or free Wi-Fi and the FTS service will examine all fields for anything matching and display the corresponding hotels. So we'll use this index again in our uh, in our sample application as we go. All right, so let's switch back to slides because we're, we're sort of done with the, if you will, with the showcase in our Couchbase Cloud console. So what I'd like to do now is start to move into the Couchbase SDK sample applications. These are, uh, all the samples I'll show you here are available from Couchbase docs. So you can do exactly what I'm doing. So we'll show you where you can go to choose your SDK. You wanna make sure that you download the samples. Um, you wanna, of course, when you load them up into your code editor, you adjust the connection properties uh, within Couchbase. Uh, I, I'm sorry, within the code. And uh, then we'll show you actually our travel sample application um, running and leveraging that full text search that we just saw. So just to give you a sense for the wealth of information and resources that are available for developers, let's take a look at um, docs.couchbase.com and go to the SDK. You can just search for Couchbase SDK. It will take you right here. And look at all of these SDKs, Java, Scala, .NET, C, Node, PHP, Python, Ruby, Go, mobile SDKs, JavaScript, C Sharp, Swift, Objective-C, and the list goes on. Uh, tons and tons of resources to help you get started on your own development. And in, in fact, uh, it goes even beyond that. We have partnerships with, um, with other providers that ha have created and worked with us to create SDKs. So if you're programming in a given platform or language, search for that SDK, inevitably it exists for Couchbase. So let's set, let's set up a bit of a scenario um, one of the things that I'm working with, again, is the Node.js SDK. So what we'll look, we'll look at is my Hello World application. I came here to the Node.js SDK for Couchbase in docs.couchbase.com. And I was able then to, to get installed and set up with the Node.js SDK in just a matter of moments. So it walks you through all of the steps, uh, leveraging NPM to install the Couchbase SDK and makes it a snap to really set up. All you have to do is copy each snippet of code and examine it, of course, so you understand what it's doing. But if you paste them in to your, uh, uh, to your code editor, in this particular order, you will end up with a working application. Now, one thing to point out is um, a little different in my application from what we see online here. Um, within this, the Hello World application, we're actually creating a little app that's going to do an upsert of a new record or document into the travel sample bucket. bucket. And uh, so what I've done is actually uh, just change it a little to do an upsert of some different information, a different document into the beer sample, because beer is my favorite. Uh, so I decided to do that. But uh, suffice to say that this code will walk you through exactly everything that you need uh, to get set up. So let's pop over and ch check out my code. But first, I'm gonna set, uh, let's go ahead and set up our, our, our scenario. So what I'd like to do is uh, um, let's add some data from my application into the beer sample bucket. So we'll look at the beer sample bucket documents first, just to show you that the uh, document that I'm going to upload doesn't already exist. So let's search for any document where the name is equal to Couchbase Brewery. 
So this is gonna be my new favorite hangout, Couchbase Brewery. And of course it doesn't return because it's not there yet. We're going to actually programmatically add this uh, from our back end, from our Node.js application. So that being done, let's pop into that project. So here we have uh, that, that sample app. This is just the hello world, very simple. Again, all I had to do was cut, copy, and paste every one of those code snippets into uh, my index.js file. And if we examine it just a little bit here, we can see this is my Couchbase cluster. Notice here's the endpoint. All I had to do was uh, go ahead and grab that endpoint out of the connections uh, section of our Couchbase Cloud console. And uh, then I use my test DB user. This is the database user that I created associated with my um, administrator account. So once that connection is made, we then look for the beer sample bucket. And then we, uh, we go ahead and uh, upload or upsert that document. So we're upserting a document of type brewery. Uh, it has the ID of Couchbase Brewery, some basic information here, the Latin launch, where, it lo where it's located, and ultimately its name. So that was the modification I made, if you will, to the code that I copied out of the SDK documentation. Just changed a little bit to, to be a little more fun. And then ultimately we go ahead, upsert that document and uh, return our results. So uh, super simple, again, very easy to get set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it in real time here. So we'll run node index.js. And it runs, returns that uh, result. So let's pop back over into our couch surfing cluster and search once again for that document. So we do it, there it is. So we have successfully um, written to the database. We've uploaded a new document into the bucket. Uh, so that's a simple example, but again, hopefully demonstrative and powerful in that it's very easy once you're connected to Couchbase Cloud to start working with the data directly from your applications. So cool stuff, I hope you agree. I, and I was able to get this working in just a few minutes um, when I got my new account set up. So let, let's step it up just a little bit and take a look at another example. There's the sample application here. This is the Node.js sample, uh, SDK sample application. So you, uh, all of the steps you need to actually get this are within the sample application docs here. So you get the project from Git, uh, you simply uh, set it up, uh, install it, and then run it. And ultimately what you get is a really cool application that shows you how uh, a more powerful type of UI can actually work with the data. And again, it's using the travel sample bucket. So as you recall, we set up an FTS or full text search uh, for hotels. And so let's take a look now at the application behind the scenes for CB Travel. So once you get that, uh, it also comes with nice documentation to tell you how to actually set it up, do a little bit of manipulation. In this particular case, again, my big uh, changes were minimal. In fact, all I had to do was grab that endpoint and paste it into our connection properties here. And again, utilize the database user that I had set up and associated with my administrator account. And the applicable code for FTS, once you have it set up, is found right about here, line 305, where we're um, issuing a search query against documents of type hotel, uh, scouring through, uh, passing that search criteria in and scouring through all of the records for matches, and ultimately returning matching uh, records for hotels, and specifically the fields of type, country, city, state, address, name, and description. So there's a lot more in this application, but the FTS is something I think that's particularly cool. So we wanted to, to show that. So I've already got this application running. Let's pop over and see how that works to the end user. All right, so this is CB Travel. Again, cool little application that's really quick and easy to set up. Won't take you through all of it, but it's a great um, front end to show you how you can create applications that do things like user management, and uh, as well as things like full text search. So uh, let's go ahead and search for 
uh, good breakfast in San Francisco. So super easy and super quick performance. So what about things that have Wi-Fi in San Francisco? We wanna look for those hotels. So there's also faceted search. Um, you can do geo search. There are a, a lot of nuances and, and, and a lot of extra configuration to the, to the search that, that you can leverage uh, for very powerful type of search capability. But I wanted to make sure that we showed this very simple and straightforward example just to give you a sense for how easy and quickly, uh, easy it is to set up and how quickly you can start to gain results. And the other cool thing about the sample application is that you're able to take a look at what's actually being sent from the sample app back to uh, um, ultimately back to Couchbase. So the queries are encapsulated in these get, uh, in these get statements here. So uh, very, very powerful and uh, simple to set up. All right, so we've gone through now a couple of sample applications. Um, showed you where to go to get those. Make sure you bookmark that SDK page in uh, docs.couchbase.com. Uh, it's gonna be your best friend and it, and it has a lot of uh, other resources linked from it. So uh, you can inevitably find exactly what you need for your SDK of choice by leveraging those docs pages. Uh, and we also showed you how, where you plug in your, your endpoint, um, where those database user credentials go, and then ultimately how our uh, CB travel was able to leverage that FTS that we set up on the travel sample bucket. All right, now let's go into um, business intelligence. So we've got data within the uh, application and we've got data within Couchbase Cloud, how are we now going to take advantage of measuring it, analyzing it, visualizing it? Well, um, we can use BI tools, they specialize in that. But you could be saying, Mark, my BI tool doesn't connect to JSON. That is not a worry because Couchbase, again, can leverage SQL statements. So in order to make that connection, we can leverage our partnership with C data. So we uh, highly recommend that you just do a quick Google search for C data connector for Couchbase. And you'll see a variety of options. They have ODBC, JDBC, and they have a specific connector just for Power BI. So that's actually what we'll show you today. Uh, and you wanna create a connection DSN. <clears throat> now there are some subtleties to the, the properties that you need to know specific to Couchbase Cloud. Uh, and this is also where you're going to leverage that security certificate. So let's, uh, let's actually show you what that looks like. First, uh, I made sure to include this slide. I'll be writing a little blog on this as well, but um, these are the settings that you're gonna need, uh, the default required settings that you're gonna need out of all of the dozens and dozens of other settings that the C data driver exposes. So the things you're gonna wanna um, collect and have handy are, of course, your Couchbase Cloud cluster database user. That's not the user you use to log in as administrator. Again, that, that database user is required here. Uh, and then the password, of, of course, as well. Uh, and for the server, you don't put the URL to the server or the IP address. That's where you grab that Couchbase Cloud endpoint that we saw in the connections properties. And I'll show you what it looks like in my own settings. This is an important distinction. So you wanna prepend that cloud, uh, Couchbase Cloud endpoint with uh, the node notation. In this case, for mine, you can go there again into your uh, uh, services to see the node notation. Mine it just goes by CB-0000 dot. And uh, highly likely that yours will as well. So put that in front of the cloud endpoint. I'll show you what that looks like. Then for the Couchbase service, you wanna set that to nickel. There's also, of course, in Couchbase at large, an analytics Couchbase service. Um, this is coming very soon in Couchbase Cloud. So for today, we'll leverage the Nickel engine. You also wanna make sure you set SSL to true and you want to provide the full path to that downloaded um, SSL server certificate. Okay, so that's that saved security certificate that you've downloaded from Couchbase Cloud. Again, uh, you get that through the connections page within your Couchbase Cloud console. So let's take a look at that. Pop over into the settings. This is what um, 
the Power BI connector for Couchbase from C data, it looks like. Once you install it, uh, it's just like setting up any ODBC DSN for those Windows folks out there. JDBC, very similar, in, but what you use that uh, connector for is to build your connection uh, string. But the, the, the concept is the same, that you need to provide, again, user, your password, your Couchbase service, and this is where I wanted to emphasize what I said earlier is that we've got my node notation here prepended to my endpoint. So make sure you put that um, node notation dot endpoint. Couchbase service is set to nickel, use SSL is set to true. And here's another important distinction and subtlety. Um, what you wanna do for SSL server certificate is provide the full path to the PEM file. So once this is done, this will allow then that connection through to Couchbase Cloud, and it will take your uh, uh, input credentials as the connection credentials. So let's pop over into Power BI. So uh, I've also tested this on uh, Tableau. You use the C data JDBC driver in that case, but the property, uh, the properties all remain the same. So we're currently uh, in a, um, a map. What I wanted to do is visualize all of those breweries in the beer sample database uh, and drop them onto a map. So Power BI made it super easy. We've, I've got one uh, uh, dashboard already here in, in partial completion. There's a few breweries here in my local area. I happen to live in the beautiful city of Carmel by the Sea on the California coast. And I imagined actually that Couchbase Brewery might be right around the corner. Wouldn't that be great? We could all meet in Carmel by the Sea at Couchbase Brewery. So in fact, you, you might recall that I uh, uploaded or upserted a document for Couchbase Brewery just a few moments ago, leveraging our Node.js application. So now what we can do is, is rerun this and, and actually pull in that, that brand new information. So first I'll show you what the query looks like just to give you a sense, and you probably see where this is going. It is a simple select statement. So when you connect up through Power BI, there's a little window that says, enter your query. And this is as simple as it is. I'm selecting the name, the lat, the launch from our beer sample where the document type equals brewery. And from there, um, Power BI was able to take it. So let's go ahead and refresh the data. Let's get that brand new brewery because I'm getting thirsty. So it goes out through those connection uh, properties, reruns and brings back the new updated information. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and we'll come again to my area here along the California coast. And there we have Couch Base Brewery. Wasn't there a moment ago till we uploaded it into the database from our Node.js application. And now we've come full circle, pulled that information out into my BI tool and are depicting it on a map. Pretty cool, huh? So the, the data uh, is all there at our, at, for our access, of course, and, and is super fun to work with. And uh, again, I was able to really set all of this up in just a, a, a matter of about uh, probably an hour and a half. And that was between phone calls. So I encourage everyone to follow these steps and uh, set up your own uh, little skunk works as it were, see how it works. And this will give you again, that great jumping off point to create your own uh, couch-based backend uh, applications. Couch-based cloud can power your applications no matter what they are. So let's head back into our slides for a little wrap up. I can't em emphasize really enough that you need to get that free trial and get going. And when it's time to develop your own applications, move to the developer pro configuration. This is what I used for the demo with a three node template. And once your apps are done and ready for deployment, the enterprise configuration is what brings the totality of scale and support to the table. We've got a plan to support your entire journey from testing to development to application deployment. And purchasing options are really simple and straightforward. You can go for the on-demand model where you're billed monthly via credit card or PO. 
But really the best bang for the buck is with Couchbase credits. This is what gets you annual terms and a 20% discount for an upfront purchase. So make sure you sign up today for your free trial. Go to couchbase.com slash products slash cloud. Thanks for joining me. I hope you find it as easy to get started with Couchbase Cloud as I did. Now get on out there with your badass self and get started with DBAS. Enjoy the rest of the conference.